I'm Gary Dunsey with Big Ben Saddlery and uh, this month's tack tip I want to talk a little bit about uh, parts of a tree and, and just a little information about a tree that might help you sometime if you're ordering a custom-made saddle. Uh, we'll just kind of go through the parts and how they're measured and hopefully that'll help you out whenever you, you go to do something like that. We'll start up here on the front end. Um, this is the swells, the horn, these are the bars. This is the cannel back here. Five different parts to, to the tree. And uh, we'll start up here. People are always wanting to know about gullet information, gullet width, gullet height, all this kind of stuff. And I can't overemphasize how you just need to know your saddle maker and talk to him about it and in turn he'll talk to the tree maker and tell them what kind of horses you ride. Don't try and tell them what measurements to make it because all these things I'm gonna tell you about today here work in unison. And if you change one of them, sometimes you don't get a good outcome. So let's just kind of look at the gullet part of it here now. Gullet width is measured from where the bar of the tree joins on to the swell right there. You measure across there. This one is six and a quarter inches. That sounds narrow, but it's not narrow. It's fairly wide. The reason it sounds narrow is because most of them are six and a half inches, but these bars tie in a lot higher up here. If they tied in up here because the gullet is tapered, it would be five and three quarters up here, but it doesn't change anything next to the horse's back. But because these tie in about a half inch higher than normal, then the measurement across here is only six and a quarter inches. But it fits the same as most six and a halfs fit. And uh, I'll show you some more about that in a minute. Right here's your gullet height. That's an eight inch. It's to the top of the swell. When it's sitting on a level surface, surface top of the swell, that's your gullet height. This one's eight inches. These are a few of the things that work in with that gullet measurement in the front. We've got a gullet measurement in the back. Back here, you've got this gullet measurement back here and gullet height. That probably means a lot more to the horse than the gullet measurement in the front does. And some things that work in unison with that are the flare on these bars. How far apart are they spread? Are they, are they flared real flat? Do they come in pretty acute? That makes a lot of difference. And then you've got the width, the width between the bars back here. And uh, that makes a lot of difference too. We're going to turn it over and look at the bars on the bottom. There's a place on the bar where everything flows downhill from it. And on this particular tree, it's right in here somewhere. But it's the theoretical place, if you put a drop of water there, half the drop would run this way and half the drop would run this way. And that's called a rocker arm. And uh, the, uh, the rocker arm's important, works with all this other stuff, like I said. So anyway, that's, uh, that's kind of what makes one fit your horse's back or not. Your uh, horn, the horn measurements are made from the top of the swell to the top of the horn. That one's three and a half. And then your cap, your cap is uh, measured across the top, outside to outside the diameter of the cap. This is called the neck of the horn. Your swells, if you order a saddle with 13 or 14 inch swells, that's measured across here from the very outside to the very outside. They're going to be wider than that when it's covered, but in the tree, if you order one with 13 inch swells, it's going to be 13 inches in the tree and then probably 13 and a half when it's covered. And then there's a little deal called the undercut. And the undercut, if you draw, it goes straight down from the swells and then measure in the gap there. That is the undercut. And that's a 
pretty important deal for a lot of people, especially if they like to get up close to their swells. Or you can put a leg cut in there. Just come in here and route that out. And uh, when your leg's up against there, it's a little bit more of a, of a fit like that as opposed to the way it is now. Some people like that. Okay, let's, uh, let's continue on the top. We'll be through with that. Back here on the cannel, when you measure the cannel, you measure the widest part outside to outside. And uh, this cannel is 12 and a quarter inches wide. One of the things that a lot of people want to know about is the dish. And you put a straight edge across the cannel there, and then get another uh, your ruler and measure in. That gives you the dish, how far it dishes in. Okay, and then back here, these are the tails of the bar back here. And uh, they're pretty important because they need to be long enough. If they're too short, three inches is kind of the rule of thumb. They need to be three inches long. And uh, if they're any shorter than that, and you have a long seat, then this cannel can get pushed out over it, and it applies a lot of pressure over the kidneys of the horse, and that doesn't work too good. So those bars need to be, tails of the bars need to be about three inches long, at least. Okay, I'm going to go to the bottom side now. Um, this area right here, all the way to where it connects into the gullet, all the way to the bottom, in front of the stirrup channel, it's called a bar pad. And that's a real important spot because uh, if something goes wrong, seems like that's where it comes out, it's right in there. This is your stirrup leather channel. As you can see, it's a channel that's dug in there, and then the rawhide's pushed down in there. It's called a stirrup leather channel because whenever you uh, put your stirrup leather, thread it onto your saddle, well, the bottom part of the stirrup leather is running down here, and it sets in there. And so by design, it's channeled out so that when the leather's in there, this is smooth all the way across. So you have a smooth, continuous surface up next to your horse's back. If it wasn't there, then you'd have the stirrup leather, which is pretty thick, just laying on top of it, and that'd be all that's touching your horse's back, and it would sore them up. One of the things you have to be really, really careful about if you live in the desert southwest, uh, these trees are covered in rawhide, and this rawhide uh, can have a tendency, whenever there's not much humidity, to keep on drying, kind of like paint. They may dry for years. So what can happen down here in this stirrup leather channel is it can bridge across. Um, it'll dry out and get smaller, and it'll pop across and bridge out. I've seen them where you could just, they were just flat across here, and you could push them in. Whenever that happens, that pushes your stirrup leather. It doesn't have to be all the way. It can be just a little bit. If it bridges across right here, your stirrup leather might swing completely out of the channel, get up here on the bar pad, and, and create a lot of problem for, for your horse's back. But uh, if it bridges across, you just have to take it apart, soak that rawhide up, and re-nail it, get it pushed back down in there like it was, and uh, then you ought to be all right again if that's the problem. Um, Trees, most trees are made out of a softer kind of wood. Um, they, uh, these particular trees are made out of East Coast poplar, and it's a softer wood. The theory behind that is that they have a little give to them, but then the strength is in the rawhide that holds it together. Um, a lot of the new trees are being made out of fiberglass, and uh, I think fiberglass some of them, depending on who's making them, are probably good trees. Uh, they, uh, I've never built one on one, but I, I can't see where they, they wouldn't work. I'm not sure that they have to be rawhided, but anyhow, the rawhide's what we've used for 
hundred and some years and it works real well if it's taken care of so uh, anyway that's just a few things about saddle trees and uh, if you have any questions or about saddle trees or any other products uh, tack anything like that feel free to give us a call here at Big Ben Saddlery thanks for watching